Esther Wachuku, and these are the top stories. Peter Ruby represented at Labour Party Political Commission meeting. Julius Aburi supporters stage protests in Abuja amid Labour Party crisis. Obaseki present as Omo Biotech's oath as new Edo Deputy Governor. Gunmen abduct ex-militant leader Egberi Papa killed two aides. And CBN stops foreign currency denominated collaterals for Naira loans. Details now. The world news begins with the Labour Party presidential candidate in the 2023 elections, Peter Ruby, sending a representative to the Labour Party Political Commission organized by the Nigerian Labour Congress in Abuja. Also present at the gathering include the chairman of the party's board of trustees, Comrade Sylvester Ejofo, the obedient movement represented at the high table by Dr. Moses Paul, governorship and other candidates of the Labour Party in the 2023 election, and Senator Victor Lar. Also present are the National Vice Chairman of the Labour Party, South South, and his counterpart, National Vice Chairman, North East, Aman Burkhart, Dr. Kingsley Ogundai, the Treasurer and the Legal Advisor of the party, amongst others. Speaking in his opening address, the Acting Chairman of the NRC Political Commission, Professor Theophilus Ndubaku, said the meeting will set up a caretaker committee involving all relevant stakeholders that will organize the party's convention. The Labour Party Party presidential candidate in the 2023 election and former governor of Anambra State, Peter Ruby, was represented by Tanko Yunusa. VOP News understands that this meeting is coming a day after Obi confirmed that he would remain in the party despite the leadership crisis and the fast growing opposition party in the country. Peter Ruby, in his statement, stated that he would continue to stand for the peaceful resolution of issues in the party, despite the Nigeria Labour Congress through its spokesman, Benson Upa, saying that Obi is free to leave the Labour Party if he wishes to. Meanwhile, protesters took to the streets in Gudu, Abuja today, backing the national chairman of the Labour Party, Julius Aburi, and condemning what they perceived as interference by the Nigerian Labour Congress in the party's internal affairs. VOP News gathered that the protesters carrying placards with various inscriptions started their march from the newly established Abuja chapter secretariat. NLC had accused Aburi of acting as the sole administrator of the affairs of the Labour Party. Consequently, the NLC passed a vote of no confidence in the leadership of the party's national chair and called for his resignation. The public has been captivated by the friction between the two organizations and questions have arisen about the legality of NLC's actions towards Labour Party and the underlying causes and implications of their dispute. The ongoing dispute between the Labour Party's Julius Saburi led National Working Committee and the Nigerian Labour Congress led by Joe Ajaro is endangering the future of the Labour Party as a whole, as revealed by investigations within party members. It has also discovered that the primary cause of the conflict was a struggle of for dominance over the party structure. Elsewhere, Edo State Governor uh, Godwin Abaseki has sworn in Omobaya Marvelous Godwins as the new Deputy Governor of the state. Omobaya replaced Philip Shaibu, who was earlier impeached by the State House of Assembly this morning. Shaibu was impeached by the House of Assembly after the adoption of the report of the Justice S.A. Omonua retired-led impeachment panel. The panel was set up by the Chief Judge of Edo State to investigate allegations of misconduct and perjury against Shaibu. 18 out of the 20 lawmakers that attended the plenary on Monday, April 8, 2024, voted in favor of the impeachment, while one voted against. In the report, the seven-man panel found the former deputy governor guilty of leaking government official secrets, but he was not found guilty of the allegation of perjury. Following the impeachment, Obaseki immediately swore in Omobayo to replace Shaibu. Omobaya hails from Akoko Edo local government area in the same Edo North Senatorial District where the impeached deputy governor came from. 
Elsewhere, gunmen dressed in army uniform have abducted a popular ex-militant leader, High Chief Sobomabo Jakrich, also known as Igberi Papa, who from is who is from Usokun country, his country home in the Gema local government of River State. Now, sources who are close to the ex-militant disclose that the said gunman stormed his home around 3 a.m. today, killed two of his lieutenants and took him away to an unknown place. One of the sources, however, believes that the attack was carried out by the military, adding that some army branded vehicles, including an armored personnel career, were used for the operation. Now, the Central Bank of Nigeria has prohibited the use of foreign currency denominated collaterals for Nara loans by all Nigerian banks. The Apex Bank disclosed this today in a letter to all commercial banks signed by Director, Banking Supervision Department, Adetona Adediji. However, the new guidelines gave exception to eurobonds issued by the federal government of Nigeria and guarantees of foreign banks, including standby letters of credit. The development comes in the wake of the recently announced minimum capital requirement for all banks. For months, the CBN governor, Olayemi Kadoso, had continued to roll out policies to defend the Naira and Nigeria's economy. You're currently listening to the World News at 6 on Voice of the People, 90.3 FM. We'll take a very short break. When we return, we'll head into the news analysis segment. Do stay with us. It is time for our news analysis segment, and I have joining us a the telephone, a legal practitioner, a political and national affairs commentator, and that is Barrister Eze Eluche. Barrister Eze Eluche, good evening and welcome to the World News at 6. Yeah, thank you very much for the invite. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening. Barrister Eze, which there is actually a lot going on in the country at the moment politically. But the first one is considering the protest that took place today uh, in Abuja concerning the Nigeria Labour Congress. You know, there, there's a protest against them. That Why are they interfering in the internal crisis between Julia Saburi and the party members in Labour Party? And the question is, is this the right time to go on a protest? And what is that protest meant to yield Gila Sabure is involved in some financial imbroglio and uh, misconduct while the board of trustees who, who are currently in charge of the labor party activities are trying to investigate most of the allegations against Julia Sabure. Joe Ajari is coming up to say that they have a stake or rather based on a ruling in March 20, uh, 2018 that the NLC is basically the owner of the labor party. They are demanding that Julia Sabure steps down. He should no longer be uh, the chairman of the labor party. Other critics are also asking Julius, uh, Julia Sabure as well as Joe Ajari to step down from their respective positions as they're causing an embarrassment for the NLC and the political party. So what's your take with the protests? Well, I am not a member of the party. I'm not a uh, to the internal politics of uh, the Labour Party, but be that as it may, uh, no single individual or organization can claim ownership for any political party registered with the INET under Nigerian laws. The moment a, a, an outfit becomes a political party, it can be said to be owned by its members, by the generality of its members, and not any single organization. So it is wrong for the Nigerian Labour Congress to claim ownership of Labour Party. Labour Party belongs to its card-carrying members. Hmm. And if the Nigerian Labour Congress is, can be a member, it may likely have just one card or whatever. So it cannot claim ownership. So we get to uh, what Mr. Bure and um, I think this is just internal politics. It is expected that if the ruling party in the country considers a party to be a threat, the ruling party in Nigeria's context will do whatsoever it can to destabilize the party that it feels constitute a threat to it. We can see that manifesting in not just the Labour Party but also in the PDP. We have for quite a while now that this, uh, these uh, major opposition parties have been riddled with internal bickering. And this is this has been the norm with Nigerian politics. It's not just starting with the current ABC. 
when the PDP was also in our office, it also did the same thing to its um, opposition members. So that is what we're experiencing. And we're only hopeful that the, the, party, the members of these parties can strengthen themselves and realize that the task ahead to get Nigeria governed well is much more greater than the internal bickering they're doing. And then we hope that with time they'll become more matured and overcome these obstacles. All right. Uh, thank you so much, Barrister Eza Eliche. For, uh, let's go on to River State. As of last week, uh, Fulbara said he was going to expose Inyesu Nwike, the FCT minister. Now, the situation between these two members or these two individuals has not, you know, been neutralized. In fact, it has set up River State in such a political turmoil that uh, there are questions about the fact, about the leadership structure within River State. In fact, a lot of people are considering it political anarchy. Some people are even asking asking for a state of emergency to be declared in River State because it seems Fulbara is trying to possibly keep his spine up. So the question now is this. The resolution that was met or that was agreed on in Abuja between Ies Nwike and Fulbara, the governor, apparently Fulbara is insisting that it was a political resolution and it was unconstitutional. Now, if the governor himself is saying that that peace pact, all right, by the interference of the president was a political resolution and it was unconstitutional, why did he agree to it? That's one. Two, the individuals involved this time around, President Bola Ahmed Tunibu, who spearheaded that political resolution and not giving, uh, what's his name, Fubara, a wide berth to choose what could be between whatever it was that was laid down there and the current political tussle in River State. Should the president come in to intervene in the matter like he did the first time? What's your take on that? Well, I think it's, um, to some extent, what Mr. Fubara is saying is very correct. Okay. That intervention by uh, Mr. the President uh, in Aso Rock was very unconstitutional. And uh, some of us, some school thought actually said it tantamounts to a coup against the government in River State. But having said that, Mr. Fubara himself is also privy and is also a part of that uh, unconstitutional arrangement. Okay. So perhaps it's, he, he's just he's enjoying the fruits of his labor. Can you explain what you mean by Fubara is also enjoy, uh, what you say is also part of the unconstitutional requirement? Oh, yes. He was at that that venue when these things were agreed upon. And Mm. he came out and told the whole river state that, yes, he he was part of it. There was even the belief that he was coerced, that Mm. there was some uh, pressure on you, pressure was applied upon him. Mm. But when he came back to river state, he announced gleefully that, yes, he did sign on to that very uh, unconstitutional document. And so that's what I'm saying. He is ha- tasting the fruit of the sour river state. They have to go back to constitutionalism. And what is it going back to constitutionalism? In river state, about majority of the members of the House of Assembly decided that they were jumping shit, that they were leaving the political party by which they came into office, and that they were now jumping, going to the APC. At that moment, they are the Nigerian constitution, they cease to be members of the River State House of Assembly. So whatsoever illegal or constitutional arrangement that Mr. Whosoever agreed upon at Abuja in Asso Rock to thwart the Nigerian constitution cannot stand. So the reality is this. Those members of the River State House of Assembly are no longer members of the River State House of Assembly. And what it means is that they, are most, they must be replaced. That is what Niger Constitution says. So whatever they are, that's going on now is building on the illegality and unconstitutionality. Some will say that there was an agreement, and based on that agreement, they came back. You cannot have an agreement that is against the Constitution. That agreement itself is wrong, ab initio. So for Riverside to get back on track, you know, especially what Mr. Fubara is saying, mm-hmm. they have to realize that they have to trace their roots back to the illegalities and the unconstitutional process that Mr. Trumbu had, had, um forced upon them. But let us not also forget that all these are telltale signs of the handwork of the INEC in 2023 elections. Okay, so in the, this time you're calling was, on INEC. INEC is at fault in all of this. They're the basis I'm for the... I'm not calling on INEC. Okay. I'm just recognizing the criminality that INEC has now visited upon River State by its illegal conduct of elections. Hmm. It was very clear in River State who won the elections. Even Mr. Fubara knows he didn't win the elections. His, his party members have come out clearly 
to say who won the election. Mm. So we're, we're now, the entire country is looking at the fruits of unconstitutionality and illegality. Mm. And I hope River State will not be the source through which the, 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 the fuse that will blow up this system gets lit. Because we are seeing it coming gradually, and we know that this area is rich in oil, they are rich in the militants, and I hope they do not set us back. That is the fear. Barrister Ezra Richer, in a media chat on April 2nd, in his own weekend, the SCT minister ruled out any form of reconciliation between him and Fubara. Despite Fubara holding several press conferences, attending several services of Thanksgiving, clarifying that the ultimate for him is peace. But apparently, Fubara was able to spine up by stating that he would no longer continue to take on the denigrating comments made by Inyes Onwike on his personality and stated that he was going to expose him if Inyes Onwike dares him. Now, here is the thing. These two men used to really love each other. They had a good and cordial relationship. The support was there. Nomination of interest form was sponsored by his political godfather, Inyes Onwike, until things became embittered between the both of them. The question now is, where does this leave the people of River State between two members who really want to show that they indeed own the state? That's it. Where does this leave the people of River State? And how will this particular situation, how will it resolve whatever crime and criminality that may occur in River State with these two people fighting this political battle? Ordinarily, one will not be too bothered about uh, what uh, people, two people, two persons who decide to thwart Nigerian concern or to steal electoral, the votes of the electorates do themselves. But at least now, one of them happens to be a state governor who is equipped with immunity. And the other one is a prime minister who has absolute immunity. So the reality is this. Mr. Fubara, if he still is man enough, let him assert his authority as governor of River State. Let him assert his authority as governor who, despite all whatever the misgivings are, the courts have affirmed him as governor. And let him go back to constitutionalism. Mr. Wicked, who is causing all these disturbances, he should recollect that before he became a governor, what was he? Hmm. The, the, when you are, when you are mass wealth by stealing public funds or by managing public funds, you now use those funds again to come at the people. So it is left to Mr. Fubara if he is man enough to assert the authority and personnel of the state governor and do his do the will that the concern has vested him with. And if you stop disturbing us, if he's weak enough, if he's too weak, and he does not understand what the power entails. He can resign and leave because the system is still very, very corrupt. Hmm. But if he wants to go back to constitutionalism, the constitutional system. And I said again, the way forward for River State is those members of the House of Assembly who resigned the membership of the party that brought them into power. From that day, they have lost their seats in the, in the State of Assembly. Okay. And that is irrespective of whatsoever John D's unconstitutional agreement that will arrive at Abuja. Because you cannot enter into an agreement to thwart the Nigerian constitution. Hmm. It is not done. So I only hope that Mr. Fubara is meaning, can, shake, can shake off this yoke of impotence that has that has been associated with him. And say, yes, I am the governor. This is the state I am the chief security officer of. And let the heavens fall if will not abide by the constitution. Pass, and let yes, us Okay. Do, do yes. you think that let is... Okay. okay. Good. Go, go, go ahead. Go complete, on. complete your statement, please. Okay. Let, let us now see what the federal authorities will do with a governor who wants to abide by the constitution. Will you say because of a, a tainted agreement that you are you reached at, in Abuja, that we, we can thwart the constitution? Because the risk is this. If by an agreement reached by any people mm -hmm. or any group of people, anywhere, sections of the Nigerian constitution can be dismissed. That means... Any other group can stay somewhere else and decide to disassociate with, uh, disassociate with the Nigerian constitution. Barista Eze, from your that. explanation, yes. would you say that the president was also involved in the unconstitutionality within, of the situation going on in River State? Would you say that he was the main sponsor of the unconstitutionality currently at play in River State? Without any iota of doubt or equivocation, that is the position. Mr. Bola Tinumbu chaired over and read out an agreement to the parties that is clearly in violation of the Nigerian constitution. So the buck falls on him. And we hope that we will work, Nigerians will work with interest. The reactions of federal authorities, and I mean military, the police, 
when Mr. Fubura decides to assert himself as the executive governor of the state. Let us now see what will happen. If the president will continue on that part of unconstitutionality, unconstitutionality, because if he does, if he does, then anything can happen to him, even as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. According to Fubara, he said he implemented the political resolution based on respect on President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, despite the fact that he knows it is unconstitutional. From your explanation now, Inye Sumwike, Fubara of River State, and the President all thwarted the Constitution by having to adhere to the political resolution that they embarked on. Now, if that is the case, then what happens with other cases that may be in reference to what is going on in River State? What if other people intend to possibly copy the same maneuvering or copy the same anomaly? What would be the response of the president in that regard? Well, the, like you mentioned, the three parties you mentioned, mm -hmm. Mr. President Bola Tinumbu, the governor of River State, Fubara, and then Ian Somwike, two out of these three have immunity for now, okay. and they can be excused while they are in office. One of them, Mr. Wike, has no immunity, and them can go against him. Hmm. Continues to propagate this unconstitutionalism, the system can deal with him effectively. And as we call upon the governor to do, to ensure that the constitution is obeyed. Let, let whoever now go against the Nigerian constitution. Let them tell us that because an agreement was reached, an unconstitutional agreement was reached in Abuja, we mm -hmm. can forget the Nigerian constitution. Then we will not realize that we do not have the rule of law or the rule of constitution in Nigeria. And mm -hmm. that means we have anarchy. Mm -hmm. And we have to be very, very clear on this. Mr. Fubara, the ball is in his court. If he decides to become governor of River State, okay, now the constitution supports him. But if he d decides to become a lackey, an ass licker, a boot licker of Mr. Nwike, posterity will never forgive him. All right, Barista Ezeluche, thank you so much. But before I let you go, here is the thing. The president is in Lagos, all right, in, 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 um, in preparation for the Edo victory holidays. A lot of political pundits like yourself feel that the president has actually visited Lagos three times since he became the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, almost like he's not comfortable being in Abuja. A lot of people have attributed maybe most of his political appointments basically because he was once the governor of Lagos State. Is it wrong that the president possibly prefers to stay here is it wrong that he actually likes to visit his home state well one i don't think that, I, don't, I don't think lagos is the home state of mr president the Austrian state has been touted as his home state and i think it's even good that he's staying in the country mm. lagos is part of nigeria yeah. he wants to stay there and rule from there it's okay we once had a uh, buhari who was staying several months in london or wherever yes, without anybody knowing who where he is Good. So, Mr. President, please feel free. If you want to come and live in Lagos and rule Nigeria, you are okay. That's because of wars. So I don't see anything wrong, uh, particularly when we have spent billions in the budget yes. to repair or uh, rehabilitate uh, the, uh, uh, what do they call it now? The task for Mr. President to stay mm. at his home in Lagos. So he's welcome. There's nothing wrong with um, Tinubu being in Lagos. All right. I, I needed us to clear that out because a lot of political pundits, I feel, feel like the president has his presence in Lagos is so much. And maybe anytime there is any official parastatal relocation, they may make reference to the fact that maybe because he really he was the governor of Lagos State at some no, point. No, when I say nothing is wrong with it, I think but that's because he's of the kind of person he is. He's okay. a parochial person. If he was more of a nationalist, what stops Mr. President from going to spend his uh, ideal victory in Ubu Ubudu Cattle Ranch or Ankari Games Reserve? Oh, really? But we have a president who is very, very ethnic, who is very, very tribal. And he keeps on coming to Lagos. It's nothing wrong with him coming to Lagos because he would have gone abroad. Mm. But for goodness sake, he should have been better off if we had a president who will feel free mm. and who will feel safe holidaying in uh, maybe Nikkei Lake Resort in Enugu or anywhere else in the country. You don't have mm. to always go to your tribal roots. It's All unfortunate. Right. I want to say thank you so much for taking your time to help analyze these issues on the world news at 6. I sincerely do appreciate your input. Thank you very much for having me on. All right, thank you. And now to wrap up here again is a summary of our top stories. You heard that Peter Ruby represented at Labour Party Political Commission meeting. Julia Sabure supporters staged protests in Abuja amid Labour Party crisis. 
Obasaki present as Omobaya takes oath as new Edo deputy governor. Gunmen abduct ex-militant leader Igberi Papa killed to AIDS. And Central Bank of Nigeria stops foreign currency denominated collaterals for Nara loans. That's a wrap on the World News at 6. My name is Esther Wachuku. Good evening and thank you for listening. Up next is the Evening Rush with Precious.